morning. Let us begin. Are there any announcements from the pews? Yes, one. Confirmation class uh, is walking around Squeezy after church today. It's probably going to be a little wet. <laughs> I'd like to uh, also let you know that the yellow flowers on the altar are in memory of Don Amy. Today would have been his birthday. The red flowers, um, Walnut Valley Church had a uh, passing very suddenly of one of their members last Monday, uh, for Sunday night into Monday morning. Um, a doc, uh, March Quick passed. And those are from her funeral. Her husband asked if I could put them here. Um, if you notice, the past few years we've had palm crosses on Palm Sunday. Um, that is Marge's gift to all of us. Um, I had no one, I, I, I could not figure out how to do it. I intended to make palm roses in her honor before I even knew the middle name was Rose. And let's just say one hour later, there's only two roses complete and at least a half a dozen palms of mall. <laughs> I took it as a gift from her and I could not do it. So uh, those are in memory of Marge. She blessed us with, with that gift every year. So also, just a reminder, if this is Holy Week, it begins Holy Week. Uh, Holy Thursday service will be here at 7.30. The Friday service will be at Walnut Valley at 7 o'clock. And for those early birds, um, next Sunday, early Easter sunrise will be at 6.30 a.m. here. So and then our normal uh, services uh, after that. So, uh, I'm trying to think if there's something else, you know me. When I think of it, I'll let you know. With that, let us stand. Our first hymn is the words are in the bulletin. The tune is to Joyful, Joyful. We adore it. So you'll know the tune. <coughs> for the music and remember. You'll notice in your bulletin insert, uh, there's a Lord's Prayer, and it's kind of like fleshed out line by line. This is by Nadia Boltzweber, Reverend Nadia Boltzweber. Um, she is the pastor of the Church of Sinners and Saints, and it's somewhere in New York City. Uh, and because of her life experiences, she really adds some, to me, inspirational insight into a lot of different things. The Lord's Prayer included. So I, I put it in there just for your perusal whenever you feel you have the time.
focusing our worship. As the people spread their coats, coats and palm branches, branches on the ground, ground to, welcome to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so, so we welcome him into our lives this morning. This morning. King, King of glory, King of peace, servant King, reign in our hearts and lives this day and all days, that we might praise your holy name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now is our time in worship where we praise before God and one another, our joys, our cares, our concerns. So are there any prayer requests this morning? Just one. Uh, prayers for, um, well, my family, especially Kelly and, uh, and her kids and uh, Austin. In the passing of my sister-in-law, Gail, she was their uh, nanny, and she helped raise them, and uh, she passed, and we're so thankful of, for all the things that she did for us. We couldn't have done it without her. Yes, Lainey. Yes, I guess it would be a joy. Uh, my friend Annette up in Corning, um, had a double mastectomy this week, and she's doing well. So I, I think that's a joy that is over, and all she has to do is heal. Also, I did not realize, I have been out of touch, that Jamie had had a hip replacement and is going through um, her therapy now, and I hear she's doing really well. Um, so there, those are two joys. My friend and that, and also Jamie. Looking at Larry, are we going to give thanks for yesterday? We, sure, go ahead. One of Larry's friends uh, finally got married <laughs> last week, and um, he and his partner had been together for so long, and I guess it's something you just don't think about when it's never been not an option to get married. But now that uh, Anthony and John, they finally tied the knot and there was so much joy in that room yesterday. It was a blessing to be there. Yes. And I would assume prayers, continued prayers with Ukraine. Let's pray. Gracious, almighty, loving God, once again, Lord, we have gathered together in your house as your family of faith, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as people whom, whose lives you have touched, whose lives you have blessed, whose hearts you have opened, whose calling you have placed on us. And we are grateful, grateful for your presence, grateful for your all that you give us each and every day, wisdom, guidance, strength, healing, whatever we may need. And we are just here to say thank you in whatever way we can. We are here to open ourselves to you, to be drawn closer to you and shaped by you, and just in, in praise and in awe of you, Lord. And Lord, as we gather, um, gather with cares and concerns in our hearts that we place on your altar at this time, we place the enemy family in your care, Lord, especially Kelly and Austin. The passing of their aunt um, this week it is always difficult when a loved one passes, but one who has touched their lives so many ways, in, in such different ways for so long, there is a hole, there is an emptiness, and they are feeling it now, Lord. And I pray that your spirit will fill that space. I pray your spirit will bring them that peace that passes all understanding eventually the weeks and months ahead. May they feel your presence and know that you are carrying them through this time. And Lord, for Annette, who has gone through her surgery and is doing well, and we just pray for her quick recovery and that she can put this cancer behind her and look forward to many years to come in good health and long life. And 
Thank you, Lord, for watching over Jamie and all that she has gone through her surgery. And now we just pray that her rehab will help return her to fullness and wholeness of health so she can literally be back on her feet and getting around as quickly as possible. Um, be with her and help her to grow stronger each and every day. And Lord, we celebrate um, with Anthony and John the blessing of their marriage and just the joy and the love that was shared yesterday among everyone there for them. Um, bless them from this day forward as they're, as they said, the best is yet to be. And we just give you thanks for bringing them together and the love that they share. And Lord, we continue our prayers for the Ukraine and all those who are affected by it in that area. We thank you for your hands and hearts being seen to the people who have taken in the refugees and all that they are doing to help them. But we pray for those who are fighting for peace, fighting for their homeland, fighting to, um, to be recognized for the people that they are. Keep them strong, and may, Lord, may this war end quickly and soon. Because we also pray for the people of Russia who don't want this senseless war, who don't want all this death, and are wanting peace in their area. Lord, may your spirit somehow bring <coughs> out the leaders of all worlds. May they bring about the peace that only you can give in some way, somehow, that is beyond our understanding and our possibility. So continue to watch over them and keep these people in your care. And Lord, there are those who are worshiping with us from their kitchens and from their couches that also have cares and concerns that they place on your altar at this time. Lord, for those who have been named who need your healing touch, we ask you as our great physician to return these people to fullness and wholeness of health. For those who name who are grieving at this time, we ask that your spirit brings them comfort and carry them through this time. And for those who have just had a joyous time and are thanking you for that moment in life, we thank you for being there, making it all the more joyful and blessed. And Lord, as always, we pray for this world where there's war, let there be peace, where there's oppression. oppression, let there be freedom, where there's hunger, may they be fed, where there's illness, may they be healed. May all come to know, Lord, the peace and the kingdom you have promised through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we us not into time. We forgot the comma. Let's put the comma in. <laughs> lead, lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the earth. Amen. I meant to say that ahead of time, but I forgot. <laughs>
First reading today is from the book of First Chronicles. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatest in the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Our second reading comes from the book of the 21st chapter of Revelation. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among his people, and God himself will be with them, and they will be, he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And as we could stand, the next hymn again, the words are in the bulletin. This is the Lord's Prayer. It's Mark Miller's rendition. I believe we have sung it here a few times. I'm not sure of your memory, so Jim, if you could play it through, and then we'll sing it through twice.
went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its old owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones themselves will cry out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Please be seated. <clears throat> Before I get going on the sermon, the sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, I had such an epiphany reading through the Palm Sunday uh, passage for this week. Did any of you catch in Luke's passage? There are no palm branches. There are no branches of any kind named. I don't know what to do with that, but I found it surprising. So on we go. Now to the Lord's Prayer. Back in September last year, one of my sister-in-law through marriage, I officiated her father's funeral. And at the end, as always, I have us in church to join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Not remembering that 90 to 95% of the people sitting out there were Catholic. So, of course, when I get to the end of it, you know, lead us not to deliver us from evil, on I went, for, with, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of it forever. All by myself. And I kind of muttered into the live mic, gee, nothing separates the Protestants from the Catholics like the Lord's Prayer. I assume you all have been in a Catholic church and have had... They do have, add what we call the doxology, that for thine is the kingdom and the power, but not, it's not strung together. And have you ever wondered, who's got it right? Well, I hate to tell you folks, the Catholics get this one. Because if you read through the Matthew and Luke passages where Jesus teaches them to pray the Lord's Prayer, it's not there. Could not find out when it got tagged on, but it was very common to add words of praise to God in any way. And scholars believe that whoever added this to the Lord's Prayer was inspired by David's prayer that you just heard from First Chronicles. If the word said there were a lot of words similar in that um, praise, that's why. That's where it comes from. Or that's where they assume it comes from. And so it was not unusual. It just wasn't part of the original. But although um, it wasn't part of the original, uh, Adam Hamilton decided to dig into it anyway because... All of the Protestants use it as part of our Lord's Prayer. So we start with the first two words, for thine, or for yours, however you choose to pray it. And that first word, for, that preposition, can also be translated because. So all the things we have prayed for before this is because or for God. Yes, Yours is already the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Think of this as an affirmation of faith, an affirmation in that one little word. Hamilton expands this part of the prayer like this. He goes, because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, O God, I know that you are with me and hear my prayer. I know that you are able to provide for our daily needs. I know that you can rescue us from evil. I know that you forgive the debts that imprison us, freeing us to spread that same forgiveness to others. 
All because of that one little word, for. And, and then add to that the word thine or yours. This is back to remembering that we are to live to God's glory, not to our own. For thine is the kingdom. Your kingdom, not my kingdom. For thine is the glory, not my glory. For thy will, not my will, be done. It's a reminder to ask ourselves over and over again, what kind of lives do we truly want to lead? Do we plan on leading, leading uh, self-centered, narcissistic lives and be all about gimme, 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 it's, this is mine, this is mine? Or are we remembering that we are to live to God's glory? And it's about his glory, his power, his kingdom. And then in such a way, we live magnanimous lives, generous lives, caring lives, the way Jesus lived for us. So in those two little words, there is so much packed in there. But the prayer goes on to say, for thine is the kingdom. The first word we have, and you remember earlier on when we heard about that, the verse with the kingdom, talking about God's kingdom. Now it's hard for us because we don't live in the kingdom. But like that first time, uh, Bishop William Willimon and Stanley Howard was right again. Here comes politics again as we end the Lord's Prayer. I want to read to you um, the quote they gave for this, past, for this part. Here comes politics once again. One more time we end our attempt to pray as, as we attempt to pray as Jesus taught us. They note that the Lord's Prayer, particularly in this line, is a pledge of allegiance to a king and his kingdom that throws all our allegiances into crisis. Have you ever thought of the Lord's Prayer and that last line in this way? It is a pledge of our allegiance to God's kingdom, God's power, and God's glory. This pledge and this allegiance to God's kingdom, power, and glory are meant to come before all other allegiances in our lives. He writes, Chuck Colson, the special counsel to President Richard Nixon, served seven months in prison for his role in obstructing justice related to the Watergate scandal. Shortly before his prison sentence began, he became a follower of Jesus Christ, and after his release, he became a thoughtful Christian leader. In his 1987 book, Kingdoms in Conflict, he noted that throughout history, the church, with its pledge to the kingdom of God, has often come in conflict with the kingdoms of this earth. Um, Hamilton goes on to write a lengthy example talking about the church during the time of World War II in Nazi Germany. He goes, the church was one of the few institute, institutions that fought against the Holocaust, that fought against Hitler, that fought against the crimes of humanity at the time. They were living their allegiance to God's kingdom as opposed to following the kingdom of this world. He ends this part of this chapter by quoting Karl Barth, and I love this, who was one of the great 20th century theologians, who said, to clasp the hands in prayer is the beginning of an uprising against the disorder of this world. Our prayer is meant to impact our politics and policies. It is meant to resolve the conflict of our allegiances. So when we declare that it is for thine is the kingdom, that is where we are pledging our allegiance to, first and foremost, before any others. <coughs> the prayer goes on to talk about for thine is the power. The Greek word for power is dynamis, where you can guess we get our word dynamite from. And I love that imagery of dynamite being the power of God. It's, it's defined as the authority, strength, force, or capacity to accomplish something or to get something done. And when I think about how the church, I mean, starting with Jesus, fought against the injustice and inequality of his time, and we continue to do that in our day, the bigger the issue seems to be, the more power is needed, the more dynamite is needed to 
Get rid of it. Could blow it to bits if you want. Care to think about it. And we are part of that because God gives us this power through the Holy Spirit. Hamilton writes, this means we have the power to be his witnesses. We have power to influence, power to act, power to do his work. We can use the Spirit's power to impact others' lives and the world around us. And like I said, the bigger the issue, the more dynamite it needs, the more we are, the more those of us are needed to fight against it. This is the power that we are praying about when we pray this line. And it goes on to say the verse is the glory, God's glory as well. Now glory is called doxa, which it just means weight, reputation, splendor, impressiveness, and majesty. And you can guess we get the word doxology, or words of praise from this word. What I like, Hamilton uses the example of the moon to convey this part of the prayer. He goes, when there's a full moon out, you really don't need a flashlight when you go outside because the moon is reflecting the light from the sun and it gives enough. And you might want to ask Larry about his midnight sleigh ride someday if you want to know about how much light there can be when the full moon is out. As opposed to when there's a lunar eclipse and the earth obscures the sun's light on the moon and it can't be seen. How we act, how we live our faith reflects the glory of God, or not. How many people have you heard say, I won't go to church, I know the people who go there? Or something to that effect. People look at churchgoers to be reflecting the love and the glory and the compassion and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, of God that they expect. And when we don't live it to the fullest, we obscure the glory of God and his kingdom. Forever and ever, amen. How the prayer ends. What I love is the word in Greek, or the words in Greek for forever are eistos, ionis, which means into the ages. Which means it's here, but it's not yet. The kingdom is here, but goes on into the ages. So this is a reminder that although God's kingdom is coming, remember back when we pray on, on earth as it is in heaven, we are also expected to remember that heaven is already here, and we are supposed to be adding to it and help build it. So it is Jesus was more concerned about bringing heaven to earth than earth than those of us on earth to heaven. So this is part of that bringing his kingdom into the ages, remembering that it's already here. And amen. Who knows what amen means? We pray it how often at the end of almost every prayer. I think it means um, I agree. Almost. Let it be done. Let it be done. May it be so. Let it be so. <clears throat> yes, or affirm we're asking. May it be so. Now, when I started this sermon series, I knew there were six weeks, six chapters to go through, and that we would end on Palm Sunday, and I was kind of like, what do I do with this? But I think how appropriate that we do end this sermon series on Palm Sunday. Because we pray this doxology every Sunday when we pray the Lord's Prayer. It's a praise to God, just like that crowd praised Jesus walking into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And it made me think about how we pray it every Sunday, but how long does it stay with us during the rest of the week? How often when a snafu happens, be it whatever, in the middle of the week a challenge arises and we get more angry at God or we forget about God altogether, that God is not walking with us, that we just think, of, oh, why did that happen? We forget. And 
I'm hoping we don't get to be like the crowd by Friday who was condemning Jesus and wanting him crucified. Uh, but sometimes that even happens when life gets super tough, that we get mad and we want him dead. So it's quite appropriate to think about the doxology we pray every Sunday. And may we not be that crowd, that original crowd. May we hold on to the faith. May we hold on to the praise. May we hold on and remember by praying it every Sunday, may these words seep into our, our souls and our hearts and our bones so that when a challenge in life does arise, we remember, Lord, thy will, not mine. Thy kingdom, not mine. And when, we, when that starts to happen, we, we face each challenge knowing that God is walking with us and God is there with us and will give us whatever we need to get through it. And those challenges are not mon mon uh, mountains anymore. They turn into little molehills, so to speak. That's why we pray this prayer so often, so that it can seep into our very being. And then we can be the ones who go out in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. American Sign Language, believe it or not, I learned from John Denver. Way back in the day, uh, the one concert of his I got to go, we got to go to, um, he showed this to his, the audience there at the time, and he told a story about how he was on a camping trip some September in 1982, and he met this gentleman who, along with being a phenomenal storyteller, I believe the gentleman's name was Dick Spencer, uh, he was also half Native American, 
and this Mr. Spencer explained that you know Native American tribes all had their own languages, but when they met together anywhere, they, there was a sign language they could use to communicate. And so to teach John Denver some, because John and his family had just adopted a little boy who was half Indian, Native American, um, they taught he taught them the Lord's Prayer. And so I would like to teach this to you this day. But to do that, I need you to stand up. Space. And you are able, I should say. <coughs> so we are going to start with, face a little bit both ways of fire to see, with our starts like this, but then you put your finger out and go, our father. Father is just something in your chest. Our father. Which you learn which art. So which one? Do which one? Which art? In heaven. Now, hallowed. They didn't have a word for hallowed or holy. What little, little I know about Native American spirituality, they had no concept of sacred, uh, of secular. To them, every place, everywhere, all the time, God was there. There was no place God was not. There was no place to set apart from. So there was no understanding of something being secular. God was everywhere, all the time. So. To come up with something called for hallowed or holy, they decided it was some, the meeting of the mind with the spirit. So it's hallowed be thy name is Watakashin, by what you are called. Hallowed be thy name, thy again, kingdom. They didn't have a, an understanding of secular, there's no understanding of kingdom, it was all kingdom. So what they came up with was holy tiki. Thy kingdom come, easy enough. Thy, now they didn't have a word for will, so they thy, thy way. This is how they do thy way be done. Is this? Thy way be done on earth as it is in heaven. I love this. Give us. <laughs> Universal. <laughs> How demanding we can be of God. Give us this day our daily bread. They pass their bread loaves. And forgive us our trespasses. Again, they didn't have a word for trespasses or sin. So this is someone stealing from you under the cover of night. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not oh, oh sorry, lead, I'm getting ahead of myself. Lead us not into temptation has to be to the left. It can't be to the right. They don't know, but it doesn't go with the prayer. Quote unquote. So lead us not into temptation, but Deliver us from evil. And evil is forceful to the front, in front of you, not behind because it could come back to bite you. So, <laughs> evil. This For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever is the sun rolling across the sky. Forever. Amen. There we go. Could the offering be brought forward, please, at this time? Join me in dedicating our offering. 
generous God, God hear our gifts of time, hear our gifts of talents, hear our gifts of money, building stones for your kingdom, awaiting, shaping, and placing within your loving purpose. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 21 of mine out of the faith we sing.